Hey guys, welcome back. Mr. Wiz here. If you are new to this channel, we build video games. I already have posted a ton of lessons teaching you how to build games here in MakeCode Arcade. Right now we're going through extensions, specifically the secret extensions that you wouldn't know about because they're not on this recommended page. The only way to find out about these extensions is to get the link from someone. So I'm gonna be sharing a bunch of these with you. I've already done several, I still have several more to go. So today we are doing a very small one. So this should probably be a short video. This is the count up extension. So for the count up extension, it works very similarly to the count down feature that's already built into MakeCode Arcade, but in the opposite direction. So pretty self-explanatory. I'll show it to you here real quick. To use the count up extension, you just need to paste the link right here in the extension search bar. That is the link, and I will also put it in the description of this video. PXT count up, and then I'm going to go ahead and open it up right here. So it does not add anything new to our toolbox. You will find it in the info section, the same area where the normal countdown is. So in info, we have score, we have life, we have countdown. Nothing's changed here. We have multiplayer. Down at the bottom, we have our new blocks, the count up blocks. And yes, it's only a few of them. This is a very small extension, but it can still be useful. So if you're thinking about the countdown, we've used countdown before in games. A lot of times in games that have a countdown, you're trying to rush the player to finish something before time runs out, right? So in what situation might you have a count up? Well, maybe it's a, the situation is a survival game. Maybe you don't have a limited amount of time. They have as much time as they need but the goal is to get it in less time, right? So you could do something like that. There's other ways you can get creative with it, but count up acts the opposite of count down. So if I put count up in here, you will notice it sets the it sets it up at the top, the same place the countdown works. The only difference is it's going up instead of down, right? Pretty, pretty simple there. There is a plus sign behind it. Now this is new. You can actually have the count up with the UI turned on or off. So UI is an abbreviation for user interface. Basically what this is saying is, do you want the player to see the countdown? So if it's on, then they will see the countdown. If it's not on, then they won't, but it's still happening. You just won't see it. So let me give an example of that. Let's put a uh, on game update. I'm just gonna throw something together here real quick. Let's say that for some reason you want the game to end at exactly five seconds. So we can use time elapsed. So if time elapsed, and I'm going to do greater than or equal to just to be on the safe side, equals five, then the game will end, right? So this is a five second game. Of course, that doesn't make any sense for a real game. But just for the example of this program, it's counting up once it hits five, the game ends. And that's great. But what if you don't want the player to see the time? You can turn the user interface off. Now, we can't see the time, but it's still counting it. And after it hits five seconds, we still get the game over win. So that's kind of a nice feature, just having that. So you can have essentially timers in your game without making them a visible part of your game. I, I really like that feature. So that's one nice addition with the count up. Let's look at the other options. We have a block here that pauses the count up. We also have a block that clears it, that basically resets it, right? So we have both of these and that's really all there is to it. The block that creates the count up and either makes it visible or not visible. The block that pauses it, the block that clears it. And then this bubble just shows us how much time has passed. So I used it for the logic here to end the game. Um, another thing you might use this for, if I'm thinking about how I would use a count up game, usually if I'm using a count up game, the goal would be to finish quickly. Whatever the task is, you would want to finish quickly. Maybe the game is a puzzle game, or maybe it's a maze, or maybe I'm trying to find hidden objects. And once I find them all, um, and I'm trying to find them all in the fastest amount of time, right? So in a game like that, where I'm trying to do something in the fastest amount of time, the time kind of acts like my score, right? But I want it to be the lowest number possible, just like it would be in a game like golf, where you're trying to win the game in the fewest number of hits. So if I was to use a count up, I would probably also change the way the scoring works. So let me just give you an example of that in case you've never thought about this. So this is just an example of how to build a game where the low score is the best score, right? And I'm going to do it with this example. So what I'm going to do 
is let's just make a game that's super easy to win. I'm just going to press a button, and when I press the button, the game ends, okay? So obviously, I would never actually make a game like this. But we're just going to assume that this is the, whatever the task is that ends the game. Maybe you find the end of the maze. Maybe you find the last item that you were searching for. Whatever the task is. Oh, and we're going to turn the UI back on so we can see it. Whatever the task is, I'm going to simulate that by pressing A to end the game. But what I want to do is when the game ends, I also want to the score to equal the time. And then I want it to be a high score if it was a fast time. So what I'm going to do is in the info section, I'm going to grab this set score block. And I'm going to put it inside the same area where the game ends. And I'm going to put set score to the number of seconds elapsed. So when I end the game, score is three. There we go. So there's no actual score counter in the game because it doesn't. The score isn't set until the end. Score is at six. Great. Now here we have our first problem. It's saying that six is a better score than three. Well, we know based on what I explained, I want the smallest number to be the best score. So how do I fix that? Well, MakeCode has a great block for that in the game section. This is a relatively new block. It didn't used to exist, so I'm happy they added it. This is a block here that lets you set what's going to be the best score. So if you don't want the high score being the best score, you can set the low score as being the best score. So now I have a, a game here that when it ends, it's going to save the score as equal to whatever the time is. And if it's the low score, it will get marked as the best score. So let's try it. So this has been going for 12 seconds. I'm going to stop it. Score is 12, but the best score was 6 because it saved it from the last high score. So let's see if I can do better than 6. Obviously I can because I made the easiest game in the world. 3 seconds, and there we go. It says new best score. Cool, cool, cool. So that's how easy it is to use the counts up extension and also to change a game so that the low score becomes the best score. So I taught you two things in here, hopefully. If you learned something new today, please click that like button so I know that you enjoyed this video. Um, if you build something using one of the tricks I taught you today, I would love to see your game. So if you use the counts up or if you used a low score as best score, I would love to see the game that you made. Click on this button right here to share your link to your game and put it in the comments. As always, I hope you're subscribed already, but if you're not, please subscribe and don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel. I will see you guys later with some more videos on some more extensions that um, can make you help you make really good games in MakeCode Arcade.